The team sheets for the Sacramento Regional have finally been released, so today we're going to be taking a look at all of the top teams and breaking down what did good. So to start things off here, guys, as always, massive congratulations here to Michael Zhang. Uh, really, really cool team. You know, it was great to see him use Kamoa very effectively. Um, Kamoa, in my opinion, was one of the biggest, you know, uh, medicals for the event. Um, same, same with Titar as well. Titar and Kamoa were two, I think, Pokemon that just did fantastic into the meta game. Um, and seeing, you know, both of them on the winning team was really, really cool. But guys, I guess before we quickly jump into breaking down all the teams here, I did quickly just want to look at these usage stats here now. I don't know. Yeah, we're not going to be able to zoom in anymore on that, unfortunately. Um, but as you can see here, I believe this is the top... Uh, it doesn't actually say. I'm going to guess it's the top 20 mons, maybe top 25, something along those lines here. But if you have a look at the metagame, right, you're basically looking at a lot of very physically orientated mons. Um, obviously, you know, you got things like Fluttermane there, Heatran... Tornadus obviously is a special base mon, but they don't normally build to be a good special attacker. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, Iron Bundle here and Chiyu are there. Uh, but for the most part, this is a very heavily, you know, dominated physical metagame. Um, also, Golden Go at 11 picks is like insane to me. Um, also, I should probably have stated as well, this is the top 128 teams. Um, the usage stats from the top 128 teams. So yeah, very crazy to me to see Golden Go so low. I do think that mon is incredibly good right now. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind when we are kind of looking at these teams here and I'm kind of, you know, giving information based on what did you know. Pretty damn good, right? So um, I actually, too, I'll quickly show you guys this as well. If you guys don't know this already, um, I'll, I'll link this down below. It's the uh, basically the Top Club Explorer. Um, it's fantastic for like looking at all these teams, breaking it down. I personally do like using this more than Victory Road just because, you know, there's a couple different reasons. For one, you can like search teams. For example, uh, Kamoro, who is our star of the show today. Uh, you'll see here only three of them made it into the top 128 teams. But when you actually have a look at this, they're all three of them were in the top 32 uh, with actually, you know, this team here, um, Donald Smith's team, actually finishing 17. So basically three Kamoros in the other uh, top 17. Very, very impressive. Uh, but anyway, looking at Michael Zhang's team here. So when we look at this team here, you can see that Michael's team is very kind of balance orientated. He doesn't really have any hard supports on the team, but he does have, a, you know, quite a few mods that do a bit of supporting, right? Obviously, you've got things like Rillaboom with Fake Out, um, Tita setting up the sand for itself and its Hisuian Arcanine friend. Um, obviously, you've got Iron Bundle here with the Icy Winds as well. Um, you know, and, and then of course, you know, uh, Intimidate on the, uh, the Arcanine plus House, you know, boost up his friends, uh, Will O Wisp as well, just really, really good, right? Um, Iron Bundle is a mod I really want to touch on though, because I do think Iron Bundle has been. At least in my opinion, what I'm playing, it's a mod where on paper, it looks so damn good into the metagame. Um, and again, when you look at like, you know, some of these, you know, top usage mods, right? You see Boost Iron Bundle just beat Scarf Landorus, which is, you know, arguably like the second most um, popular mod in the format right now. Uh, these three are obviously kind of changing a lot. Um, and then Ogre Pawn, you know, when you combine them together is the most used mod. Um, obviously, it's fantastic into, you know, the... Um, the, the Water Ogre Pawn here, really good into the Fire one as well, if it does go for the Terra Fire. You know, decent into Heatran, you know, pretty good into Rillaboom. You know, there's just a lot of mods that, you know, it matches up incredibly well into. So because of that, I do think Iron Bundle is like, probably like, it, it's one of the big meta calls because it's so effective into a lot of what's good. Not to mention like, while Trick Room is still somewhat popular, um, you know, Tailwind kind of did drop off a bit, right? So if we actually go back to Top Cut, Cut Explorer here, um, go back into the Sacramento Regional. If we have a look at Tornadus, you see here it only had 32 usages, right? So 32 out of 128, it, it's on exactly, I think that's exactly one fourth of teams. So like 25% of the time you go up against the Tornadus. Um, so in the cases where you're not going up against the Tornadus, obviously having, you know, the fastest mod in the format with Icy Wind is very, very important. And it can be really, really clutch. Um, the next pairing though on this team here though was the Hisuian Arcanine plus t -tar. Now, my understanding of the t -tar in particular on this team was it gave this team a really good size spam matchup, right? Like, when you look at this team, it kind of really struggled into Trick Room. And while Tita, like, it's not the best into things like the Blood Moon, Blood Moon Ursa Luna teams. Um, it is, you know, really good, obviously, into, you know, Armour um, and Didi, which I do think was a little popular at this event. It wasn't anything too crazy. Um, we can actually check exactly, you know, how many Armour Rouges were there. Uh, Armour, Armour. Um, it's, okay. I, I can't actually type it. That's, uh, that's a bit embarrassing. Uh, where are we? Armour is there. So, eight Armour and Didis, right? Um... You know, it's a good mon, right? We see one here in the top eight. The rest of them didn't do, you know, too crazy, but obviously it's a very tough matchup to deal with, right? And Tita basically just makes that matchup really, really free. Um, and then Hisuian Arcanine. Now, the really cool thing with Hisuian Arcanine plus um, Tita is obviously one, you've got the Intimidate, right? So you're dropping the attack of all your opponents. Uh, and then two, with the Sandstream, you've actually, you know, you get that plus one, you know, special attack boost, right? Sorry, special defense boost. And when you look at the metagame, you know, all the special, pop, uh, the popular special attackers, you've got things like Fluttermain, Chiyu, um, obviously Heatran are like probably the main three. And then of course, Iron Bundle. Um, so really like, you know, Hisuian Arcanine's already good into like four of the top five. Um, it's also pretty good as well into, you know, things like Farafa Rig, um, even Golden Go, like, because obviously because of the fire timing, it can, you know, eat the, um, 
that make it range pretty easily. Uh, and then, yeah, just giving it that, you know, that boost with special defense is very, very important, right? So those two make this, like, really cool combo of, like, you know, you've got this, you know, supportive mod in Arcanine who still puts out a lot of damage. You know, um, Rock Slide from this one's still really good. Fla uh, Flare Blitz, obviously, is just insane, even with, like, very low um, attack investment. And I do think, I believe his set was made public. I think it was, like, four attack adamant or it was just four attack no. Uh, it was either four attack adamant or four attack jolly. I forget exactly which one. Um, but obviously, with Howl, you don't even need adamant nature to really start putting out a lot of damage, especially to when you're howling up your Rillaboom, howling up, your, you know, your T-Tar. It can be really, really good. Um, and then finally, Will-O-Wisp is just fantastic, right? There's a lot of matchups where you go up against things like a King Gambit. And, it, you know, King Gambit's answer to you normally is, like, you intimidate it, you know, you give it the plus one, and then it just starts, like, sweeping with Sucker Punch. But you can intimidate it, then you can just will o -wisp it and kind of not necessarily ignore it but you can really neuter it right because you get the will o wisp off and then you can start firing off some flare blitzes um and it kind of forces it to you know really start clicking with swords dance uh tita again just a really really cool mon obviously you know fantastic synergy with hisui and arcanine but the terra psychic was really interesting now originally when i saw the terra psychic uh, you know my instant thought was like if you want something that hits you know things like you know obviously iron hands why not just go for you know something along the lines of um you know gold like uh, sorry terra fairy right but then you get things like golden go um terra fairy is like it's good, but it's not like amazing. There's like a, you know, a bit of Terra Steel running around and whatnot. So Terra Psychic Psychic Blast was really, really interesting. You know, it was really good into, you know, obviously the Urshifu's, really good into the Iron Hands. And so just overall, a really cool Terra there. Um, also, you know, giving it the resistance to the fighting type, which I do think is pretty big. Um, not to mention, you know, the what, what Psychic is, I guess, weak to. You know, Dark is pretty good against, right? Dark obviously resists... Um, uh, other dark and it also resists uh ghost as well which i do think is really really important um then the star of the show so if anyone i guess didn't watch um the the final two sets in uh at the regional um this kamoro absolutely carried like it was dude it was like so good and again like going back to this you just look at this like physical mon physical mon physical 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 just so many physical mons like running around in the format and because of that iron defense kamoro is absolutely insane and then like you know, Hisui and Guja was doing a pretty decent job of being that, you know, that mon where, you know, you would click the iron defense, but it just didn't have, you know, one, one thing is it didn't have the stab um, that, you know, Kamoa has, which I do think is a massive difference. Uh, but then also, I do think the, you know, the bulletproof makes this mon really good into Fluttermane. Now, obviously, you know, this is a mon that is naturally 4x weak to Fluttermane. You know, it's it's not a, like, fantastic matchup per se. Um, but with Terra Steel, you know, all of a sudden you resist the, the Shadow Balls, uh, sorry, you resist the Moon Blast, and then with Bulletproof, you're immune to the Shadow Balls. So with Terra Steel, you do actually kind of hard wall what is, like, the best mon into you. Um, and then with Iron Head, you can almost, I, I believe it's always a one-shot um, with Terra Steel, um, or it's, it's very close to, which I do think is really, really good. But yeah, Kamara absolutely carried this event um, for Michael. It was fantastic. You know, watching those, like, la especially the Grand Final, um, the way the Kamara just kind of, like, set up and then was just a model was uh, kind of insane. Uh, and then we have the Rillaboom here with Miracle Seed Terra Grass. This one to me was actually really, really interesting. So um, obviously a really good support here. He's got the Fake Out, he's got the Taunt, um, he's got the Wood Hammer obviously being, you know, one of his main stabs. But my assumption is this Grassy Glide absolutely slaps off this set. I'm sure you'll one-shot any Fluttermane that isn't like Terra Grass. Um, and yeah, I, like I haven't tested this myself, but on paper, like seeing this now, I'm like, damn, I might actually have to test this because a lot of the time when I run Rillaboom, I'm kind of using it as more of a kind of a support, right? You're kind of using it as a pivot to, you know, set up your own Ogre Pawns. Like, you know, you fake out to let them SD and then you kind of like, you turn around, you know, pivot in and out with your fake out while you, you know, your Ogre Pawn kind of sweeps through the, with Grassy Glide. Um, but a set like this actually is really, really interesting because it does mean Rillaboom itself puts out a lot of damage. Um, so that is really cool. And then to round things out, a very standard Fluttermane here. The only real, you know, shocker to me is that, uh, that Psy Shock tech. Um, I can't really think of off the top of my head why you would want Psy Shock when you could just hit something with a Moon Blast. Yeah, um, that one, I'm not too sure about, unfortunately. But look, a really cool team by Michael Zhang here. I think this was, like, a fantastic team. A really strong, like, balanced team um, that, you know, still had some, you know, quite a bit of, you know, ways to deal damage while also, you know, being able to support the team really well. Because, again, you've got three offensive mods that all, you know, provide a bit of support here, which I do think is really cool. Um, the main thing though here is no Ogre Pawn on this team, which I did find very, very interesting, um, but it is still really cool to see. Now, his opponent in the grand final here was Riley. Now, Riley's team also was kind of interesting, right? So obviously we see the return of the Urshi Power Knight here paired up with Ogre Pawn, which I do think is a really strong combo. The physical like power this team just puts on the board is insane. You know, you've got basically like two mods that don't care about, you know, Intimidate at all. 
Um, a good pawn who sometimes doesn't care about it, you know, like I think it's like one in eight chance to crit. Um, and then Tian Pao obviously just, you know, supports them all incredibly well. Um, and then you yeah, were kind of talking about how they didn't care about Intimidate. Well, you got this guy King Gambit now who like wants you to intimidate him. Um, you know, Terra, you know, Dragon on this set as well, which is, I do think, pretty good. Um, it's really good into, you know, Fire Ogre Pawn and Water Ogre Pawn, which I do think are two of its worst matchups. Um, it's also really good into Urchifu Rapid Strike as well, because while, you know, you can still get CC'd, um, a lot of the time I do think, you know, like cleaning it up with Surging Strikes was definitely better because, uh, you know, there, there are always options like Terra Fairy, uh, yeah, Terra Fairy, which you're not going to see, obviously, in an open sheet format, um, but it is still really cool to see. Uh, and then the guy Amoongus. Amoongus is back, boys. Um, you know, this is a mod I do think is, like, incredibly slept on. Like, again, if you go back to here, you see 15 Amoonguses, like, back in, like, what, Reg, Reg E, Reg D, you would have seen, like, Amoongus top three, top five. Um, so to see it, you know, down here at, like, 15th is kind of crazy, um, but I personally do think Amoongus is really, really good right now. Um, and I think it's kind of like a bit of new toy syndrome. I do think Amoogus will adapt. Um, actually, does Riley have Sludge Bomb? Okay, Riley doesn't have Sludge Bomb. He does have the Grass Knot, which is interesting. Um, but I personally have been testing a little bit of Sludge Bomb because I do think it's really good into the Ogre Pawns. It allows you to do about 50% if they don't Terra, um, which can be really, really clutch. I do think its biggest issue, obviously, is running into you know things like Fire Ogre Pawn, which are pretty strong. Uh, but obviously, with a good defensive Terra, it's, it's not that big an issue. Um, I personally do like Terra Fire, um, because obviously it allows you to wall out the, the Fire Ogre Pawn and the, the Water Ogre Pawn. Um, obviously you can't, sorry, let me rephrase that, right? Um, you obviously can't wall out the, the Water Attacks coming out of the Ogre, like the Water Ogre Pawn, but at the same time you don't have to Terra it in front of it, which I do think is pretty important. Um, so yeah, Terra Water, interesting, um, but obviously still really good. It's just a very good neutral, um, you know, Terra typing there. But this team, really interesting. Um, the D9 in particular is like one of the most interesting things right now, because it does feel like people are kind of steering away from Banded D9, and we're going to see the AV one kind of rise up a bit more. Because um, again, like you see things like Thunder Punch on this team, which I do think, again, are pretty cool. Um, oh, what was it? I, f I feel like I saw someone talking about what this was specifically for, and I can't think of it off, to off the top of my head. Um, Because, like, obviously it's decent to things like Tornadoes, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, E-Speed, D-Knight would probably just almost do it with Terra Normal. Um, but yeah, look, still a really cool team. You know, I, I do like seeing the Urshi Power Knights as long as I'm not the one playing against them. Uh, but King Gambit definitely on the rise. This mod is... I, I think with the, the drop of Urshifu, the rise of this mod in particular is... It's getting better, right? Especially with things like, you know, Intimidate picking up, you know. We're seeing Landorus and Hisuian Ar Arcanine on, like, literally every team. You know, you have a look here. He's the number two usage. Hisuian Arcanine is, like, what? Maybe somewhere between 10 and 15. You know, having Intimidate that high up. And then again, you've got things like, you know, Bleak Wind Storms are out there. Icy Winds are out there. These are all things King Gambit resists. So I do think, you know, that kind of makes King Gambit really, really relevant. Um, and I do think we'll continue to see, you know, it pick up in usage. Um, but anyway, moving on now to the top or um Raygav here now Raygav was oh, man I feel for the dude um he was a magma storm away of being in the grand finals uh for those who didn't see basically in I believe game three up against Michael um there was this like situation where Raygav was like kind of in like a good position to win um and then he missed his magma storm on the on the uh what's it called the Kamoa as it started to set up uh basically you know he missed that and then i think he ko the iron bundle and then he missed another magma storm um the second magma storm miss might not have mattered um just because you know i think he was at a point where he may have just uh sorry michael might have just squeaked it out anyway um but in saying that as well michael did uh sorry Raygav also did crit the um the Kamo with a stomping tantrum as well doing about 50 percent. so it, it kind of balanced out in the end but he was so close to winning um, so yeah, it did suck to see him go down there, but look, this is a, you know, it's a pretty standard team outside of, you know, his snow mode. Um, this is, you know, obviously the first snow mode we've seen, or at least it was, I think it was two, it was one of two snow modes in the top eight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, look, still a, you know, a pretty cool team. It's a pretty good balance. And, you know, Baxcalibur really just kind of gave it that offensive power it was kind of missing, right? So, you know, obviously if you look at this team, right, um, again, we'll, we'll start with the snow mode here. So you obviously, you got Baxcalibur plus the Alolan Ninetales. Alolan, Alolan Ninetales, they're boosting up Baxcalibur's defensive stat, which is very, very good because obviously, you know, the meta is very physical, um, physical base. But on top of that as well, just, you know, making a mon as bulky as Baxcalibur that deals so much damage, even bulkier, it's never a bad thing, right? And then you add things like Aurora Veil into there. You've also got this really fast Icy Wind. Uh, Moonblast as well, which was really clutch. It, um, it is how Raygav actually won game two against Michael, I believe it was, when he one-shot the, the Kamoo. Um, so that is really, really important. But Baxcalibur, it just, it has so much support on this team, right? If you have a look at it, its game plan is like SD up, get that scale shot going, and then just start one-shotting everything with Ice Spear, right? But also he has the Ice Body on this team. So Ice Body paired up with, you know, the Grassy Surge out of the Rillaboom means this one heals a lot of HP back per turn, right? It makes it incredible, not only is it like incredible, 
incredibly bulky, but its regen is kind of crazy, right? If it sits on the turn, you know, on the field for three, four turns, all of a sudden, you know, you're getting 30, 40% of your HP back, which I do think is really, really important. And again, this one's so bulky. Like when you're talking about, you know, getting, you know, the I think it's like 10 to 12% back each turn if you pair them up together. Like you're talking about a mom with like base 100 and like, I, I, what is it actually? Let's check. Yeah, you, you're talking about a mon with base 115 HP and then like its defensive stats are decent and it already hits so damn hard, dude. Like you don't even have to invest much in this. Like you could honestly do like 36 Adam and, and this mon still hits like a truck and then you just like bulk it up, speed it up. And then yeah, just like go from there, dude. It, it's kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, so like you basically got this back to with just support, right? You've got, you know, a, a really like... I don't want to say with just support, because obviously the, the four supporting mons are all very offensive still, right? Like, Ruler Boom, you know, can still put on quite a bit of pressure with, you know, Woodhammer and the Grassy Glads. Um, Heatran obviously puts on a lot of pressure too. Like, we saw as well the Magma Storms were, like, super clutch in, you know, some of his games here. Like, his ability not only to just, like, trap them in, but also hit them with, like, a base 100 special attack. It's kind of insane. Um, and then, like, Earth Power, Heat Wave, you know, just great coverage. Um, no Flash Cannon, but I don't think it was necessary. Like, it's necessarily needed on this mon. Um, Ogre Pawn is, like, it's interesting, right? Because he kind of feels a similar role as Amoongus where he's like a redirection mod, but like follow me is just better than Rage Powder, but also at the same time, like you don't want Ogre Pawn to hit you, right? So it's like, you, you're always questioning, is he redirecting me? Is he hitting me? Cause like Ivy Cudgel off this thing, even if it's 76 Adam, it still pumps out a lot of damage. Um, and the same with the thing with Landorus, right? Obviously, you know, it's an Intimidate mod. We all know what it does. Uh, but if it just starts clicking, you know, it's Choice Scarf, you know, Terra Flying's, it puts out a lot of damage. It puts out a lot of damage. So, you know, I think this team just does a really good job of supporting Bax Calibur, especially too, because like when you think about like what Bax is bad into, right? It's just steel types, right? Like there is no other typing that resists you know, it's two, like, main stabs outside of steel. So when you've got things like Landorus, you know, you've got things like, you know, um, Ogre Paw and Heatran, like, you can kind of deal with the steel types, um, which is kind of funny because, you know, he did end up losing to a, a steel Kamoo. Uh, but look, a pretty standard team here by Regev, but definitely one of, you know, one of the coolest ones. This, this is a team that I could see myself playing, which I do, uh, I do really enjoy when I'm looking at some of these, you know, top cut teams. Uh, and then finally, you know, Shane. Um, I'm going to try to speed this one up a bit because I do feel like I've been rambling on for quite a while about these teams. Uh, but look, this team here, it's... It's just a pretty standard team, right? Um, outside of really the, the booster Carmine Flutterbane, um, this is just what you expect from like a rain team, really. Um, I honestly, personally, I'd probably almost run it as a sun team. I understand he's got the rain there for the um the the Urshifu, which you know is obviously really really good. Uh, but when you got things like you know booster flutter, um, you got obviously Rilla Boom there as your main support, which crazy that we actually saw so much Rilla Boom over Iron Hands in the top four. Um, you know, but you've got the Flutterfish combo, you know, you've got the Hisuian Arcanine. It's just really, really strong, dude. Like, I love Tornadus Chiyu. It's like my bread and butter right now. Like, I almost run this exact same team, except I think I've got Ogre Pawn in the, the, the Arcanine slot. Like, that's the only difference. Um, but yeah, look, still a really, really cool team. You know, it's, it, again, it's just like a Scutizi team. It's my bread and butter. I just love, you know, this like super hyper offensive Tailwind team. Um, and yeah, seeing it like play stop forward does like make me, you know, it makes me feel pretty good about the archetype and it's definitely something I want to continue exploring and, you know, just see if I can, uh, min max on some of these, you know, top teams. But with the top four out of the way, I guess I want to talk about like my takeaway on these teams, right? And really for me, um, the number one thing I see when I look at, you know, the, these top four sides is balance does feel like it's kind of king, right? Um, obviously, you know, I think the first team is... It's still kind of like, in a sense, bulky offense, right? You know, you've got, you know, like your Intimidate, you've got your setup mons, you know, you've got like a good chunk of support here, but it does feel like a more balancey offensive team. Um, you know, kind of similar with Riley's team as well. Like it's obviously, you know, it is quite hyper offensive in the sense that you've got the, uh, you know, Urshi Power Knight, you've got the Ogre Pawn and whatnot, but it does feel like with, with his, you know, spreads and his item choices, it is kind of more bulky offense in a sense. Obviously King Gambit with like a Moongus is just like really good. Um, you know, then you got AV, you know, D Knight as well. So, it feels to me like more of a bulky balanced offensive team. Um, same with Regev's team as well here, obviously. You know, you're kind of playing like screens, intimidate pivoting. You know, you've got fake out and whatnot. So really, really cool. Uh, and then finally, you know, Shane, you know, he is uh, the one tailwind guy amongst, you know, all the balance. Um, but another thing too, I guess, is the only manu manual weather, sorry, not manual weather, um, you know, uh, ability, ability setting weather we see here is the Night Hells. And even if you like look down here, um, obviously, you know, you've got Night Hells here, one Torkoal here. Um, it is actually kind of crazy to see actually three, uh, three ability weather setters in the other uh, top eight. I did not expect that, uh, which is kind of cool here. Uh, but anyway, we'll quickly move on to Andrew's team here. We'll just go a bit faster through these teams because, you know, there's not as much to really kind of touch on with this. Um, but I, I, I kind of said it before with, you know, Shane's team. This looks like a team I'd run. It just looks like a really good standard, you know, tailwind offense team, right? You know, you've got your Ogre Pawn Fire here paired up with the Rillaboom. It's really good. You know, SD Grassy Glide with Rillaboom is kind of crazy. Um, obviously, you know, Tornado's here. It's setting up the tailwind, giving you speed control. It's a fantastic taunt user. Um, Rocky Helmet over Covert Cloak. Interesting, but obviously, you know, still pretty good. 
Um, you've obviously got the Rain Dance as well paired up with, you know, your, your Urshifu. Obviously, you know, the Rain Dance as well also, you know, it protects the other Rillaboom quite well. Scarf Lando, it's on every team. Specs, uh, Fluttermane, really good. Um, I guess the one interesting thing here is, um, it is Trick Room on Fluttermane, which I guess is kind of his, you know, way of kind of matching Trick Room, which is, uh, definitely pretty interesting, right? Then we have Alberto Lara's team. Alberto, fantastic player. This guy's always got some sauce, you know. Uh, he's out here with the Gastro, and you know, you look at this team, right? This is a this is a balanced team, right? It's it's balanced. You know, you got the Shroom, you got the Gastro, you know, the Gambit, the Lando. This is a balanced team. You know, lefties on the Heatran. Uh, but one really really cool thing I did kind of want to touch on with this team in particular is the Gastro supports it incredibly well, right? And you might be like like. What, like, why does it support it so well? So, like, obviously, you know, you've got Landorus who doesn't want to get hit by water moves. You've also got, you know, uh, the Heatran who doesn't want to get hit by water moves. But you've also got Terrifier Gambit and Terrifier Amoongus. So, I do think, like, on this team in particular, Storm Drain Gastro just puts in so much work. Um, clearly, you know, it's a very good team. You know, we got the AV, you know, Gambit, which is just one of the best ones in the format. Lando, fantastic. Fluttermane, fantastic. They don't really need... I don't really have to say much about them. You guys know what they do at this point. Um, but yeah, it's just... This is just a really, really good balance team. It's well thought out. I, I do think this team needs a bit of brain power. So it's not the kind of team where I'd say like, hey, just pick this up and go throw it up, you know, jump on the ladder with it. Um, Cause it is, you know, a bit more difficult, but yeah, it is still a really, really solid team. You know, Alberto, dude, I can get, keep, keep winning with Gastro, my guy. And then we have what might actually be the sauciest team of the top eight here. And that is Brian Collins team. Now, this is a somewhat standard, you know, sunroom, trick room team. Um, No Hisui and Lilligan or any Lilligan for that matter on this team. Um. He does have the Galay that I believe he actually lost because he, as you can see here, it's nicknamed Seraledge. Um, because of that, I think he actually lost the Glade and he made top eight with five Mons, which is very, very impressive. I'm uh, very unfortunate though that he, you know, was kind of forced to um, play with five Mons. I kind of wish they just said, hey, just go rename it. Um, it is what it is. You know, Galade is still a really, really cool Mon and it's cool to see, you know, do so well. Um, but the rest of the team here, you look at it, you know, we've got Ursa Luna not paired up with Cresselli, which is kind of crazy. Um, obviously, Psy Spam's here. Again, Torkoal without Lilligan, also kind of crazy. Uh, but obviously, you know, those two are just fantastic under Trick Room. Very, very good. Psy Spam under Trick Room, really, really good. But the Urshi through Dark. Now, Urshi Dark, I do think, is fantastic on these teams because, you know, you end up in a lot of these situations where, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, you know, um, my opponent's going to set up Trick Room. I need to stop his Trick Room. So you lead whatever your anti-trick room is, and then they're just looking at you with a dark Urshifu, and they're like, what are you going to do, right? And then you just go like Helping Hand, Terror Dark, you know, um, Wicked Blow, and then you start just one-shotting their whole team. Uh, and next thing you know, they lose their trick room, uh, you know, counter, and all of a sudden, Diddy gets up trick room. The guys in the back come in, they sweep through. It's not a good time. Uh, but yeah, look, still a really, really cool team here. I'm not a person, you know, personally, I'm not a Trick Room guy myself, but seeing Sarah Ledge do so good is, you know, it's nice to see. Uh, and then obviously Torkoal and, you know, uh, Ursaluna without their common partners as well. So very, very interesting team. Um, but yeah, cool nonetheless. And then finally, for the top eight, Aaron Brooks team, um, you know, again, our, our second Ninetales team here. Um, This is actually standalone Alola Ninetales, which I do think is kind of important to, you know, uh, talk about. Um, outside of that though, it's just a standard balance team. You've got the hands, you've got the gambit, you've got the heat train. You guys know what this is. It's just bulky, bulky balance offense, right? With that scarf lando because it's on every freaking team. You've got the redirection on, you know, Ogre Pond Water because it's probably the best redirection one right now. Um, look, it's standard. There's not really much I want to say. They set up the veil. They're bulky. They've got intimidate. They pivot around. They got, you know, redirection. Yeah, you know, you're kind of trying to set up your King Gambit for, you know, a late game win con. Um, yeah, really cool. Really cool team. Uh, and then I guess, what is my takeaway on the top eight, right? So like, obviously they were the, you know, the eight best performing teams. Um, for me, I guess balance is it, guys. Like balance seems to be the best, right? We have, what, two Tailwind teams in here, one Trick Room team, and then like five balance teams. So uh, yeah, balance seems to be taking over the metagame. Um, I'm really curious to see how things obviously, you know, adapt going forward, because I do think Obviously, the more balance gets played, the more people are going to start, you know, figuring out ways to be balanced. Um, but balance definitely does seem to be king, especially in, you know, in tournament-based form, uh, tournament formats right now. Um, and then I guess just for the rest of the team, like, obviously, if you guys want, like, you can jump on here and take a look. There's 128 teams to go through. I'm not going to go through 128 teams. I've, you know, we're, by the time this video ends, we're probably going to be here for closer to half, uh, for half an hour, which, yeah, it, it's, it's a long time just to be uh, reviewing teams here. Um, I guess, what are some of the teams I wanted to talk about here? Um, Alex Underhill, I guess. We'll, we'll go to Alex, right? Um, Alex brought my guy Roaring Moon. He did finish ninth. Very unfortunate. Um, I have tested this team out. For those who don't know, this team is public. So um, go check out Alex's you know, Twitter and whatnot if you want to find it. I do think Neil also did a video on this team uh, where I do believe he also gave out the spreads as well. 
So this team's public. Go try it out if you want. Um, really, really cool. More of a supportive Roaring Moon. Um, you know, knockoff plus breaking swipes now. The thing with breaking swipes that I do think is really, really interesting is it does actually allow you to breaking swipe things like King Gambit, you know, these Defiant Mons, uh, because you got this guy here in Weezing, which is really cool. Um, Weezing is also really nice because it basically turns off like every important ability outside of Protosynthesis, which is like fantastic because obviously Booster Energy Roaring Moon. Uh, loves its Protosynthesis boost here. Terra Poison was a really cool adaptation. Like for a long time, I've been personally thinking like Terra Flying feels bad some games. Um, so obviously seeing him, you know, drop the Acrobatics, pick up the Terra Poison here, really, really cool. Uh, pretty standard really here, you know, standard, you know, Urshi, pretty standard Fluttermain. Um, and then yes, it's it's honestly like kind of like a standard hyper offensive team, except like instead of like Tornadoes, you've got like this, you know, this Weezing plus Warring Moon. Uh, and I think the thing with these teams in particular as well is they're very annoying to deal with, right? Because um, the, the Weezing in particular is like, it's just annoying to deal with. It's hard to pilot around sometimes, especially, you know, when you got things like Will-O-Wisp. Um, you can also like, you know, because you're, um, because it turns off the uh, prankster ability, um, you're able to like tailwind with your Roaring Moon and they're just like taunt opposing tornadoes, which is really good. Um, it can be just like incredibly annoying, right? Just this team, it's a really cool offensive team. It was really fun. I tested it out on Lighter myself. Um, I would highly recommend it. Go check out Alex's, you know, Twitter if you want to uh, see the team and test all that stuff out. Uh, and then I guess the next guy we'll touch on here, Neil. Um, if you guys don't know, Neil VGC, he's one of, you know, one of the best content creators we have in the scene right now. Um, I do believe he was using the same team as Alex, uh, if I'm correct. Where is Alex? Where is Alex? Did I get my names wrong? Did I mean Andrew? Yeah, I think he's got the same team as Andrew Ding here, right? Is that correct? Where's Neil? Yeah, they look about the same. I apologize. For, yeah, they look the same. I'm, I'm pretty sure Neil said in his video that him and Andrew work together. I don't know why my notes say Alex. Um, but yes, Neil and Andrew, I believe, did kind of work together. They had the same six months, but different sets. Um, you know, Neil getting top 16 here. Very, very impressive. Um, just a fun, hyper-offensive team. If you guys haven't tried it, go do it. You know, you see the Rocky Helmet here. Um, it's just good, boys. It's just good, you know. Um, I personally love Flutterfish, you know, paired out with my Tornadoes. But obviously, you know, look, Neil's got better results than I do right now. So uh, he knows what he's on to, yeah. Um, Scarf Lando on this team, you know, we've got the, the booster sub Fluttermane. I do think Neil actually said something about, like, sub was his way of beating Trick Room teams. Um, like, he would lead, like, Urshi plus, like, uh, Fluttermane, just, like, set up sub or something along those lines. And you've got, like, Riller in the back to, like, swap terrains and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, look, a cool team by Neil. Definitely something I personally would probably test out myself. Um, I do think Neil's team's also public as well. So like, obviously go check him out as well. Um, is there anything else I really want to touch on here? Um, Gavin's got a cool team. Gavin's another like really, really good player. If you don't know who Gavin is, go check him out here. Uh, Stefan Mott also running out the, the Clef here too. So seeing two Clefs here in the top 16, kind of cool. You know, uh, Clef, you know, it's a good redirection mon. Frank Guard's pretty busted. Um, but yeah, I think that is all we're going to do here in terms of the teams a again if you guys want like a, a deeper breakdown let me know um because like obviously i could sit here for like you know two hours and go through every freaking team here but um i don't think you guys would want me to go through some five four teams and you know i i don't know if i can sit here for two plus hours talking about all these teams um but i guess guys as well like if you haven't already and you're like you're really interested in you know getting more information about you know these events um i do think something like top uh the top cut here a top cut explorer i should say is a very valuable resource as i said you can see things here i think it's really good like for example um i'll give you guys some like insider information i'm playing a, a local this weekend um and i really wanted to play tornadoes rain right but i'm like sitting there thinking to myself like what works really well on tornadoes rain uh and you can just do something like this right you go here you say tornadoes you can go down here and you just say, I want to see all the Tornadoes that had Rain Dance, right? So you go Rain Dance Tornadoes, right? And then it kind of tells you, like, you know, most of the Rain Dance Tornadoes had, you know, Taunt or Protect. They were like the main two. You know, a couple scary phases, Icy Winds, Liz, yeah, whatever. You can see what their most common pairing was with. So you see, like, okay, like everyone who's playing is pairing with Flutter Main, Urshi Boo Rapid. And then outside of that, it's kind of just whatever looks good. Um, and then you can also see here, right? You can see, like, okay, like this was a Rain Dance Tornado, so it was top four. This one was top eight. This one was top 16. And so on and so forth, yeah. Like, um, I do think this is just a fantastic tool, especially when you're building your own teams or, you know, you're looking for a bit of inspiration for a team because I do really think, and this is like something I, you know, I've kind of been talking to people about in the Discord recently, um, which by the way, if you're on the Discord, come join it. It's a uh, link down below in the description. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you're a newer player to VGC, I don't necessarily think going and building your own team is the best thing. Um, obviously, you know, you can, you can make changes to other people's teams, but I would highly recommend, you know, for example, if you really wanted to play Tornadoes Manual Rain, have a look at this, see if there's a team like this that, you know, speaks to you or is, you know, really interests you, you know, click it, you know, grab the paste, you know, do your own EVs, ask people, you know, for help with the EVs, maybe, you know, change a thing or two, um, you know, but I do think, you know, pages like this in particular are just fantastic for, you know, um, 
just giving inspiration really so um yeah i would highly recommend that guys if you are if you are interested in building your own teams and whatnot in you know in the future uh but anyway guys i have been rambling on for quite a bit here um obviously if you guys made it to the video i appreciate it thank you uh you know if there's anything you want me to talk about in you know the up and coming days and whatnot you know please let me know down below in the description uh and if you could like comment subscribe all that good stuff you know it means the world to me your boy really appreciates it uh but yeah catch you guys in the next one peace